Uh, PES diagrams. We need to learn how to read these. Photoelectron spectroscopy. This is not in your book, and it's kind of a strange thing. Um, it's related to electron configurations. This is the evidence that we kind of use to justify the electron configurations that have different subshells at different energies and different amounts of electrons in them. So this, this supports the quantum mechanical model of the atom. Um, and it's based off of uh, the photoelectric effect, which is uh, a theory of Einstein, um, that you know light interacts with matter, and and when you there's an inherent property in the matter where when the light hits it, um, you're pretty familiar with the Bohr model that certain wavelengths of light can make electrons jump to an excited state and then come back down, um, but if you get an even uh, stronger wavelength of light. Um, and every atom has a different kind of requirements for that, which light will, is able to do it, and it's a property, um, you can actually remove the electron. So that's what you're looking at here. This particular wavelength comes in, and then my electron is actually removed. Removing electrons is a process we call ionization, because you're removing an electrons and making ions, specifically positive ions. So removing the electrons. And we just measure the energy needed to take off all the electrons. Uh, so we look at a diagram like this, and it's kind of like a bar graph. Um, you'll notice the axes here. This is energy. Okay, don't think binding energy. What is binding energy? It's just energy. Just, just stay with us. It's binding energy. Okay. Um, so notice here we have high energy and low energy. So these are represent electrons that have come off at different energy requirements, and each energy. Uh, spike there represents a wavelength of light associated with it. So we need to remember which electrons are closer to the nucleus. Well, it's going to be the ones with the higher energy. All right. These are closer to the nucleus because they have more energy. Um, it's harder to pull them away from the nucleus. Now my y, my y axis is the number of electrons, and it's relative. It's not always going to be a clean bar graph like this. Um, but here we've got this this peak is this height. Okay. Now we know that that first shell is the s subshell. So my height now at that height represents a height of two. So here's my two, the next shell, farther away, so it requires less energy. This is my two s shell and it is at a height of 2, so 1s2, 2s2. Now this height here is actually three times bigger, which is good because we're at our 2p shell, and it has six electrons in it. Then we're back here, much lower energy. This is 3s2, and my last one here, notice it's half the height. There's only one electron there because it's half the height of the one that has two in it. And when you know we're at the 3p subshell, because that fills up next, this is 3p1. So then we can just look at our periodic table and say, hey, nice to see you, aluminum. And there we go. So this, all the electrons do have different amounts of energy, and you can kind of see, like, at the energy breaks, like, oh, there's a shell, there's a shell. But within each shell, there's different energy requirements between the subshells, s's and p's. Uh, so here's another one. What element could be represented? I'm um, going to notice these, these bars, these lines on the y-axis, do not represent individual electrons. It is a relative number. Closest to the nucleus is over here. And it might not always be that way. Sometimes, sometimes PES diagrams are not as standardized. Sometimes the higher number could be on the other side. Um, this is still the 1s orbital because it's closest to the nucleus. So now this height here represents a height of 2. So 1s2, 2s2, and this is just a little bit bigger. Okay, we know we're at 2p, a little bit bigger. It's not double, it's just a little bit bigger. So 2p3. We look that up on the periodic table, and we say, hello, nitrogen. All right, now, here we have two knowns. We have lithium and beryllium. Okay, uh, let's, let's label these. Um, and this is just the 2s peak, okay? So the 2s peak. So lithium, we're going to call this 2s, and there's one electron. Um, beryllium, 2s, and this is two electrons. So other than the peak height, beryllium should be double the height of the lithium, because there's a double the amount of electrons in that peak. 
why is it that the energy of beryllium is over here at like 11 megajoules, but the lithium is only here at like 5? What is different about these that requires more energy to remove them from beryllium? They're both in the second, both the electrons are in the second shell, but the difference is, and we're going to explore this a lot more, is protons, and we've talked about this a couple of times. Protons. Lithium only has three positive charges, pulling those together. Beryllium has four positive charges. Those four charges are going to make those electrons harder to remove, so the electron, the binding energy is going to increase, all right, because it's harder to take them off. So we would expect a higher binding energy to shift the, the shells to the left, because they have more protons. Okay, so we want to shift, rather I should say, we shift to the side that has more energy. So here is magnesium, draw for aluminum. Okay, magnesium's electron configuration, 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, uh, 3s2. Aluminum then, how's that going to be different? 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p1. So aluminum has an extra peak. It has a 3p1 peak that we should see as well. But like we said before, magnesium has 12 positive charges. Aluminum has 13. So aluminum is going to sh make all of these peaks higher energy and harder to remove. So I'll do these in red. My aluminum peak is going to be here. There's 1s relative. We don't need to know where it is. We just need to know it's higher energy. There's my 2s aluminum peak. My 2p peak for aluminum, a little higher energy. I still have my 3s peak for aluminum, a little higher energy. But then over here, 3p1, I need another peak over here. So 3p1. And it's a little lower. So all of those peaks are going to be shifted to the left. I have an extra one on the end for 3p, and it has to be half the height. Okay? 